Hello, Twitch and YouTube. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Uh, sorry for the late start. I was out buying some equipment, um, set off to the camera store here in Calgary to pick up some clamps and a magic arm and then realized, you know, I should just ask these folks about the right way to rig up a camera for the kind of thing that I'm doing here. So we've got a big um, floor to ceiling post to my left now <laughs> that I've got cameras and lights rigged to and we're, I'm very happy with it. So it's been a good day so far. Um, so I hope all of you are having a swell day as well. Our project for the stream this week is uh, some Baratheon Wardens for Song of Ice and Fire. Um, these guys have been languishing on my two paint list for a while, and I want to try something kind of different um, in terms of my approach for these. So what we're going to do is we've got them prime black, and we haven't done a zenithal highlight. These dudes you can see are wearing, well, you actually can't because they're all black, but you can see they're wearing uh, pretty much like head to toe plate armor, right? So what I think I want to do is actually use a metallic color as sort of the zenithal light for these models. And then I'll go back in and I'll paint the heraldry uh, in a more, you know, traditional fashion. Paint the leather uh, straps, gambus on, uh, and that sort of thing uh, by hand. And we'll see if I can't just crank these guys out really fast. So to do that, I've got my makeup brush. Um, I don't want to use my fancy schmancy dry brushes for this, but you need some kind of a large conical um, soft brush because what we're going to be doing is not dry brushing, but just over brushing the metallic onto these guys. Um, so let's see how this works. So again, not dry brushing, but I do have my dry brushing uh, sort of set up out here just to take any excess paint off because I don't want it to run. And then, uh, just gonna move that tray out of the way so you can see. And we'll just tighten that up a little bit and let's see how she goes. Oh my, well that's quick. <laughs> Now, I do want to make sure that I'm getting into most of the nooks and crannies here because uh, I don't want total lack of coverage. But yeah, like I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go in and like bother with the undersides or anything um, because shadows are good. Cool. Well, shit, man. It's gonna be the fastest tray of infantry I've ever painted. So. Damn, that is uh, really easy. place that I get the metallic, you know, that I'm going to want to cover it eventually, we'll just have opaque paints uh, used to do that. Yeah, like, actually, you know, you get a fair amount of, uh, of definition kind of just by default, because there's some nice, like, thin shadows under the plates and edges and stuff where the brush can't reach. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I think what we'll probably do, though, is once we've gotten a little bit, made a little bit more progress. We'll probably edge highlight it with a much lighter um, metallic color, like maybe duraluminum or silver or something. But yeah, so like not exactly dry brushing, just getting in there and really going ham on the armor because we want to make sure that we turn it silver. Uh, and we will go and 
fix the smaller stuff afterwards. So yeah, like this guy's um, tunic, we're gonna... Actually, are these guys wearing surcoats? No, that's under his armor. Okay, cool. <clears throat> it looks like we've got more than one style here. Uh, some of these guys have like some kind of a quilted garment on under their plate. Others have more of a flowy thing. We'll see. We'll see how she goes. I've never, I've never painted uh, armor this way before, but uh, I can see why people do it. This is really fast, really easy. And that way, instead of spending a bunch of time, um, you know, painstakingly brushing on the metallic color that is the bulk of the figure, you're spending the time on the details, which is probably wise. Just grab a little bit more paint here. That's way too much. So yeah, we'll probably end up, we're going to end up doing a fair amount of precise airbrushing on these guys, I think, um, because the bulk of the, of the figure is already covered in this armor, but I don't want to have to um, try and get like yellow, which is the heraldry for the Baratheons. I don't want to try and get like these shields. I don't want to try and get yellow coverage over uh, steel, because that's going to suck. <laughs> Will not be easy. And generally confining the motion of my dry brush to like up and down, but um, I do want to make sure that I've got every surface covered because there's going to be, like you would see a little bit of um, reflective light even on parts of the steel that aren't in direct sunlight. Um, that being said, I'm not going in like under the shield or anything like that. Don't need to. Not worry about it. <clears throat> fairly 
extensive uh, oil washes here as well at some point, which I think will bring a lot of uh, nice definition onto the steel. Um, because yeah, it is it is somewhat limited in terms of how like precise and well-defined each part is, but like overall it's pretty readable, even just with this quick um, quick application. drop of paint I think <laughs> just to finish the banner bearer here Just gonna do a quick check to make sure that everything that needs to be metallic is metallic. It looks like we are good there. I wonder if maybe a really, really light, proper dry brush with. Uh, a white metal like a duraluminum or something like that might not be a good second step here. Just do it now before we get into anything else. Actually, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Because that's going to be faster than I actually edge highlighting everything. So we'll just... Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, should be fine. Okay. Okay. So, gun metal steel, dark aluminum jet exhaust, dur aluminium. So this time I'm actually going for a real dry brush, which means I'm going to work most of the paint off of the brush. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I think we're going to have to do do a full clean out of our brush here because that still has a lot of the steel in it. It's coming off pretty dark. Let's 
And normally I don't like to use paper towel, but I think for metallics I might make more sense to do that. Yeah, there we go. So here I'm trying to be fairly, fairly light-handed. I'm going to see what, if any, difference we get. Just straight up and down. Okay, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on camera, but that is picking out the edges. Like, I can see the difference that it's making. Maybe we go a side by side. Yeah. So that Dura Aluminum dry brush just gives like an, a little bit of extra range to the gradient from dark to light on these guys. But it's real subtle, so we want to kind of go easy with the the paint, like we want to keep it very, very dry uh, and with a very light touch. And one of the really nice things about, um, well, I shouldn't say one of the nice things, one of the features to me of um, making videos and, and doing streaming of miniature painting is definitely the, uh, the fact that it gives me another avenue to express the condition known as GAS, or Gear Acquisition Syndrome, uh, from which I've been known to suffer. So today was a pretty good day. Um, Picking up a very weird niche item, but I think it's actually going to definitely pay dividends, make things a lot easier in terms of moving uh, moving cameras around to film, you know, new tutorials and stuff. Because anybody who's been a sub on YouTube for a while knows that I haven't put out a new, like, long form video in a hot minute. Um, that's actually down to the fact that I want to figure out a way to make. Uh, YouTube videos that's more like authentic to my personality and aesthetic. Uh, right now, the existing stuff, it follows a format that's, you know, like pretty typical YouTube thing where you give your little introduction, uh, a quick credit sequence plays, and you know, then you start yammering on about the process that you followed to paint the thing and blah blah blah. I just don't find that very satisfying. I also don't find it very uh, like yeah it's just it's just not honest. I don't get to swear enough. <laughs> so I've been doing a lot of um, like planning and storyboarding and, and script writing. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a series of like, you know, five minute videos about specific techniques um, that I can reference and refer people to when they ask in the future. And then uh, we're gonna start doing some longer form, um, longer form video content that is not, that is, that, that will be a tutorial, but it's also going to be like, um, I don't know, kind of like more of a video essay. So, I don't know, if it, just in case anybody thought that I was 
no longer going to be doing YouTube videos. I am. I just want to do them well. Hey, I'm Mepri. How's it going? Good, you guess? Not sure? <laughs> How sleepy but alive is still alive. Still kicking. <clears throat> Just painted up some Baratheons today. Um my second faction for Song of Ice and Fire. I'm gonna try and crank out a whole tray of infantry in, well, I might not get it done during the stream, but we'll see. A whole tray of inf infantry in like four or five hours would be nice. Slap chap? Uh, not really. Um, so, what I, well, I mean, kinda. It's slap chop ish. Um, instead of the gray and white dry brushing, though, we're just dry brushing metallics right over the black because these guys are mostly armored. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna airbrush um, the shields. So, we're gonna basically reprime the shields and use uh, yellow inks for the yellows on those. And then I'm probably going to, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do for like the leathery parts. They might get brush painted or I might try and cheekily airbrush them. We'll see. But speaking of the airbrush, it's time to turn that on. <clears throat> so for everything I'm going to paint yellow, uh, I'm going to airbrush it magenta first, then do a really careful, like, tight zenithal uh, with white ink, and then we're going to go over it with, uh, I think we'll just use Imperial Fist, and then it should be off to the races with the leather and then the ground cover and done. So yeah, this might actually be pretty fast. throw this paint on the vortex mixer so that I don't have to deal with any clogs or solid crap in the tip. clean up my airbrush the last time I used it. Nope. Mm -hmm. 
so what I'm about to do is something that I would tell you never to do. If I can find them, that is. And that's grab grab the end of my airbrush needle with some pliers because it is stuck. Sorry about that. Unplugged my lab mic. Not as prepared as I would like to be today. Anyway, yeah, what I'm about to do, don't do it. With your own stuff. properly. Fuck. check our pressure since I'm trying to be fairly precise I'm going to end up spraying at a relatively for me anyway low pressure of about 18 psi or so In case anyone's never seen this trick before, uh, undercoating um, yellow with uh, magenta or pink. Uh, let's see, that's got. Uh, with yellow or pink. Sorry, undercoating yellow with pink <laughs> um, just lets you get like a, a much richer, nicer yellow. So we go. Uh pink with the uh, the base undercoat, and then just shoot some white uh, with a zenithal angle to 
set up a gradient for the yellow ink or contrast paint in this case to go over. So anyway, let's do that now. I'm not too worried about overspray. I can always go and just quickly run a brush along the edge of the shield here. But yes, it's going to look weird first, like having the uh, pink all over our shields. But worry not, there is method to our mix. One thing that can help uh, your accuracy when you're trying to airbrush tight like this, um, like if the surface is fairly large that you're trying to cover, as you start in the middle of it and work your way out, you'll have you'll know where your paint is actually landing. All right, so instead of having to try and eyeball like, oh, I want to hit like exactly this tiny border area, you know, like, okay, there's the center, and I work my way out to the edge, right? I'm sorry if you can't see this very well. The, uh, it's hard to airbrush in such a way that it's clearly visible on camera, but you get an idea of what we're up to. So yeah, as I'm going through painting these shields, it's sort of doing everything it needs to to convince me to uh, paint the the leather bits with a uh, with a paintbrush. Uh, I think there's some tunics that I'm going to have to go back and turn pink actually.
here. Sometimes you can get away with not putting any thinner in this Molotov paint, but today is not one of those days, I guess. So, a couple block uh, drops of flow improver or airbrush thinner probably would have been a good call here. Make things a little easier. Still, all things considered, not falling too badly. All right, now we're gonna go and try and find, so I'm looking for dudes that don't have this pleated, because that is padded leather. So, not that guy, not that guy, not that guy. Okay, this guy. He has a tunic of some kind on, I... I'm gonna paint it yellow. <laughs> It's good that there's, okay, there's only three of these guys that have the little splash of yellow on their tunic, so this shouldn't be too bad. Knock this out quick. Fixing to do, whatever. Life goes on. coverage on some of these shields.
So yeah, basically all that's going to happen is once I'm done with the yellow, um, we're going to end up just running a brush along the sides of these shields uh, to just clean up any any overspray, but it's actually not going to be super noticeable. Maybe uh, not. and then get some white on there. Not the end of the world if there's a little bit of that magenta left in there for this next bit, but I do want to get most of it out. because we're only covering, we're not even doing the entire, like a full xenithal, so it should only take a few drops of paint. Let's make sure that we're getting the sort of coverage that we want. All right. That's doing a lot of the spitting, what the hell? Thank you. 
Jeez, that's really bad. Oh well. Actually, I clean this because it is all over the place. Spend a bunch of time turning this pink just so that I can uh, cover it in white paint because we want the pinks uh, in the shadows because the yellow contrast paint will interact with that in a very pleasing way. But Holy shit, we are having problems with this airbrush today. Just a tremendous amount of uh, spattering and spitting. building up on the needle, which is then getting blasted off in these giant globs. What is causing that? Mm, I could be rocking the needle back too far without enough air coming out of it. That's probably what it is. Okay, well... steady stream instead of pulsing should fix the problem for now
This is a live demonstration of why I don't pretend to be an expert with this airbrush. Because mysterious shit happens with some regularity. have paint that's not flowing well uh, around the needle because what's happening is um, the spray a bit and then it like stops and it kicks out more paint when I release the trigger so I think I just needed some flow aid in here or something because it's just not making it around the needle without drying out a little bit. Anyway, we're almost done. Yeah, see you there. Now we got spider webbing, cool. It's like the quickest path to feeling inadequate about something that you're kind of okay at is to do it with an audience. And then they can wonder like, what the fuck? But no, the positive takeaway though, <clears throat> if you are struggling with your airbrush, it spits, spatters, whatever. Don't worry, have us everybody. It's just one of the things you gotta learn how to deal with. Like if I was being really, really obsessive about these, I would have probably come at this a different direction just for this exact reason. Like I would have primed the entire thing in that pink color just to get the undercoat that I wanted for the yellow. Um, but here we're trying it kind of a different ass way by doing just this one little section, right? So make sure we got white paint on all of them. Okay. Let's do a little clean up here and then we can switch to uh, actually, I should probably base coat the ground. One of out here. Since we didn't do a zenithal highlight, we'll just go straight to uh, like an opaque color, which will be, I think, German camo black brown to start with. I could do this later, but I just want to make sure that I'm when I'm done with the airbrush, I'm actually done with the airbrush, you know? <clears throat> and this, uh, this next part's going to be much less precise. All 
I just want to avoid mixing this directly in the cup of my airbrush because where is the flow improver? Like, am I drunk? I don't think so. water because that's still pretty sludgy. pressure up a little bit for this. Because here we're just uh, trying to cover this fast. Just turn it some kind of not black. Um, and camel black round still is super dark, but it ain't black. And that's all we want to do here is just get started on some kind of colors for the ground. Same thing. All our bases here. not being very careful because of a tiny bit of overspray. That's just free weathering. Just blast that down back into the ground. But yeah, I do want to be sure at this stage to cover up any of the steel that I overbrushed uh, to begin with. I guess one way I could have avoided needing to do this would be to um, use basing material that doesn't require painting and to apply it after. And then we wouldn't have cared about the um, this steel color getting on the ground, but I had not made my mind up yet how I was going to do these when I find them. So. Hey Ferg, it's good man. Just painting some dudes in armor. What are you up to this afternoon?
Add a juice. In the studio, what are you guys recording today? And also, how are those commandos coming along? Tell Eric I say hi. Um, I know we were talking yesterday a little bit about the uh, the test run of the um, battle report filming thing. I think I have a way to make it more awesome. Um, we just need a couple folding tables and... Today, I think I secured the equipment that I would need to set up in the basement, like a temporary, but like easy to assemble and disassemble sort of filming setup. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if we can make something work. Okay, that is still very, very black. So I'm going to add a lighter tone here and yeah like a mid-tone brown yeah but I'm thinking like um, I mean those tables can't they're not that expensive right I might just buy a couple so that I've got them here too And that way you don't have to cart them back and forth. Like it's just something that can be like set up in advance, right? But yeah, I, d I started doing a rough edit. I'm about halfway through the game. And uh, I think I took, cause we said the entire game, including like intro stuff and whatever was just over an hour so far I've cut out 15 minutes of hmm, um, hmm, uh, you know, like non-content. <laughs> um, but I think I'm, I think we're going to, I think it'll end up coming in at around like 35 minutes. The whole, the whole video, like start to finish, which is pretty good. I think. Yeah. That looks a lot better. patchy application of this dirt color because we're going to dry brush it later anyway, but I just want it to be 
some kind of color that isn't just straight up black. But yeah, like I think, um, so what I did is I picked up this, you, you can't see it, but there is uh, like um, a floor to ceiling post to my left. And they come as a set of two, so one of them can go in the basement. And basically, it just, uh, you know, you can use it to mount, um, I just shook it, like cameras and lights and stuff too. So I'd be able to actually stretch a camera out over the table and get a more of a top-down shot, which I think is going to be the ticket for that kind of thing. Uh, and also get it up a lot higher, because we'll be able to go all the way to the ceiling instead of, you know, limited by the height of a tripod. So I don't know, do you think I should um, keep editing the one we already shot, or should we maybe make plans to, you know, do a better job filming another game in the near future? Because like, it's not like the playtime for Firefight is you know, problematic, and it takes like, especially now that we've actually got uh, a couple games under our belts, like we'll be able to get through it that much faster, and end up with an edit that's, you know, 20, 20 good minutes. Uh-oh, yeah, plug in. Well, I mean, it's not that it's not up to the standard, I just think that um, the equipment was a limiting factor with that first one, and, like, we would be, like, if we put one out, then immediately change the style, it's just a little jarring. I don't know, though. I'm probably fucking overthinking it, I should just make the thing. <laughs> Hammer bro, you. Oh my god. Let's just throw everything all over the place. I'll probably go ahead and do it then, just to get like a sense of. Um, I mean, just the, uh, honestly, the practice editing it, you can kind of never put it up on the on the tubes, is worth. Because the more you do things, the more the faster you get at them, the easier they are to do. Yada yada yada. Yeah, that paint is too thick. There you go. on a large area like this, so we're going to have a lot of fiddling to do here, but that's fine.
Yes, so that's another thing we could do for sure. Um, actually compose our own soundtrack. I've actually been thinking about picking up a MIDI keyboard for exactly this reason, but one thing at a time. Not that I can't, like, you know, record a bass guitar and yada yada, but um, for doing stuff like that, a MIDI controller is a pretty good idea. Now... Now I want to get more of a yellow brown in the mix here. So, a little bit of Vallejo flat earth. Hey, Cytokinesis, what's up, bro? It was good to see you at that Propagandi show, bud. Still doing the um you were streaming some stuff with your synth a while back if i remember right are you still doing that and back to what i'm doing here there's no rhyme or reason to any of this because we're trying to emulate dirt and dirt is all a bunch of mixed up tones and shades and stuff. so not really worried about consistent coverage or exactly what color it is. I just want a lot of variety. have the same problems. It's got a lot of shit we want to do and not nearly enough time to get it all done in.
I think that is a color for battlefield mud that I'm okay with. Just get a little bit more in there of that yellowy, yellowy brown. There we go. So I'm probably going to end up needing to do a substantial cleaning on my airbrush after this, which is fine. Like, as in trays for the Baratheons, all of them, this is the first one. <laughs> That's all right. We're doing, like, this is, uh, we are, what, an hour and... 10 minutes like of kind of not trying very hard and chatting while I do it. So not too worried about it. We're going to follow generally this same process for all of them because um, when you're talking about the quantities of models you need for Song of Ice and Fire armies, you don't want to paint them to a display standard because it will take you a month for every tray. So we're just getting them done. Um, so now it's time to turn some stuff yellow um, where our painstaking underpainting will hopefully pay some dividends. So this is just the Imperial Fist uh, contrast paint. I love this yellow. It's very nice. You'll see what I mean here. And see what happens when that transparent yellow interacts with the um, the magenta. Like it gives you that really nice, rich shadow. That is why I did all that. It's actually a little thick. Try and sop a little bit of that up. That's actually, hmm, I wonder, 
if maybe our undercoat is not quite dry. Because that... I don't know. No. Actually, when I think about it, I was doing this sort of the same approach to the yellow with those orcs. So this has kind of been um, painting various types of yellow the Twitch channel for a few weeks now. And then the shields, same deal. Transparent yellow over this uh, white and pink, uh, it just looks so fucking good compared to trying to paint yellow up from from nothing. Like, yes, there's a bunch of time that I had to spend like getting the undercoat in, but if um, you know, if you're able to do it on a larger surface, Bagarathians? What? <laughs> No, I get, it. I get it. Yeah, I, I, okay. I put it, I put it together a little late, but yes, I, I understand. Yes, like orcs and Baratheons. <laughs> um, but yeah, yellow is one of those colors that, um, it can be extremely frustrating for a new painter to try and get a nice looking yellow. Um, and unfortunately, that's just something that you can't, you can't really avoid, like using, um, you know, the whole base coat wash highlight approach. You're going to have to be fairly mindful about not priming things black and then doing many, many layers and blah, 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 which is why, you know, honestly, um, this kind of underpainting these techniques, I think, are something that uh, new painters can definitely benefit from. Benefit from, even if they're not. But like, you don't own, a, own an airbrush yet. You can do everything I did here with a dry brush. In fact, in some cases, it might have turned out better because you wouldn't have had the fucking spattering that I got a couple times on these shields. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it was um, magenta, but doesn't have to be like any pink tone that's uh, fairly. I mean, you don't want it to be dark, but you want it to be not like not squid pink, not hot pink. It needs to be um, somewhere. It needs to be purplish, like a, a purpley, purplish pink color. See there, actually, that was a little bit of not completely dry pink paint that just got mixed in with our yellow. That's all right, though. I think I haven't shaken this hard enough. <clears throat> 
Uh, on the Orcs, I used a Burgundy. So that would have been... Or wait, did I use Burgundy? Yeah, I did. Yeah, they were Prime Burgundy. So this is like a much redder color. But it's the same kind of idea. Um, but the Burgundy, the reason that you do that with something like those Orcs is because uh, the green skin tone on them is going to work better with that than pink. So just kind of meet in the middle. At least I think I primed him burgundy. Who knows anymore? It was all of a, two weeks ago. <laughs> that might as well be last year. Uh, it depends. So, are you going to do a, like, zenith hole undercoat? Or are you looking to just paint them in the normal way that you have been painting other stuff up to this point? The reason that I use that burgundy undercoat is because, you know, we prime the whole thing burgundy, and then from above with the white to create that zenith hole highlight, and then go over it with thin paints to let the sort of the, the underpainting, the pre-shaded um, stuff kind of come through. And the way that the colors interact matters a lot more if you're doing that. If you're just trying to paint them the normal way, then no, you don't have to do that. You could prime... Uh, I would actually... F I'd probably go with, if, you're, if you can, I would do the Zenithal thing, um, regardless of whether or not you're using uh, transparent paint, but if you can't, uh, it would depend on the color scheme apart from the flesh on your orcs, like what color are their clothes gonna be. Like hypothetically, let's say they were going to be wearing like a lot of blue on those orcs as long uh, and have uh, you know the green orky skin. I'd probably say go with something that's like a medium gray for your primer, because um, you don't need to worry about you know getting coverage of a really transparent color like a yellow or a red over something. So gray would be kind of a nice, a decent compromise to just to make sure that, um, you know, you don't have to do three coats of green just to cover it, but it's still dark enough that if you leave parts unpainted, it looks right. Like the shadows look like shadows. So if you're not using like contrast paints and, and inks and stuff, the value of doing zenithal priming is just that it kind of helps you to see where light should fall on the object. Um, so even though you'll paint over it, you'll at least know while you're painting like, okay, so I need to highlight. It'll, it'll kind of give you a shape of the highlights that you need to do to make the thing look believable. Um, trick you can always do is take pictures of the, like if you don't want to do a Zenithal Prime and you still want to be able to use like a light map, just take uh, a picture of the primed model directly underneath a lamp and uh, turn it into black and white and increase the contrast. You'll see where all of the, like the brightest parts on the shapes will be and you can just kind of follow that as your guide for how to highlight things.
Okay. Yeah, no problem, man. All right. So I think probably the thing to do is to go back and clean up any places where there's overspray and put our steel back in there. this guy because I didn't do a very good job of blocking it when I did the banner. Oh well. fussy about this because washes are going to take care of it a little later but still better to tidy it up at least a little bit before I move on to the next thing uh, the only thing I have to do to the gas lines team for tomorrow is to change the heavy machine gun on that car to a minigun uh, other than that we are running exactly the same thing I did last time so Look the fuck out, because we're going to blow some shit up. Should probably go and <clears throat> reread the rules for capture the flag, just to make sure I know. Oops. What the hell I am doing come game time. Yeah, that's a chip. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, I I think so. If I mean if weapons are alive with like right out uh, the starting, well, there's no starting gate, I guess, but like from the beginning of the game, um, yeah, we could be exploding some people for sure. Kind of wondering why, um, or what I'm going to pick when my time comes. Like, for the sake of variety, I don't know if I'd want to, you know, even if it is a good, good game type for, for old Rutherford, don't know if I want to run it back or if I want to do something else. Okay, I'll try and do this a little cleaner. That's why I can't fucking see. Oh, so if you if you don't have your own, you can't win. Like you have to actually hang on to your own flag, or you, even if you have two, you can't. I and mean, that could that seems like it could be over super fast. I'll have to read the thing because I'm probably misunderstanding.
Okay, and then we've got quite a bit of overspray there. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how uh, you got all you guys with your design to go fast teams fare in a um, in a more sort of shooty, explodey game type. That's for sure. Oh, so you add like armor plates and stuff? Side mounted rams? shipping but I don't care all I have to do is hide some ugly airbrush mistakes <clears throat> This guy's the little tuniki skirt thing I'm going to end up having to do a fair bit of brushwork on, because I don't like the way that looks. That's okay. Nice. Yeah, submachine guns are, they definitely seem like a good way for a vehicle that can't afford like to actually mount big weapons to get a few extra dice for sure. Oops, 
Just all over the place today. Holy shit. Yeah, I just swoop in and, oops, scoop up the uh, the flag is a legitimate strategy. Our touch ups done. Um, okay, so next we will need to base coat all the leather stuff. Um, but yeah, I got started late today and it's now four o'clock. I'm gonna have to actually wrap it up there. Uh, and next stream, we'll come back and we will do all of the leather bits and stick some tufts on this stuff. Actually, I might do that off the tufts since the landscaping I'll probably do off stream. But uh, yeah, so uh, again, sorry that we got kind of started a little bit late here. Uh, yeah, Stargrave is just a D20 system, and I'm sure that would be enough. Um, the rules are pretty simple. Um, but yeah, so we're going to just call it there, because uh, this would be hour three if I'd started on time. <laughs> um, so thank you uh, for hanging around. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Eric, and thank you for the sub. Uh, I am trying to stream every Saturday starting at 1 p.m. Mountain Time on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, if you are watching this VOD on YouTube after the fact, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and all of that stuff. Um, more long-form video content is in the works, including a, some battle reports with Fergatron. Uh, and yeah, thanks again. Cheers. Have a good one. See you next time.